that's got to be maybe four foot, three to four feet long. So many different colors of rock and dirt. I might be trespassing right now. y'all welcome back so uh, this is day two of exploring dinosaur national monument if you didn't watch the last video make sure you go back and watch that one uh, for day one of this but there is so much more to this park to see I know I'm still not going to be able to see probably even half of it uh, but today we're going to be going back into the park we have to exit from where I camped last night we're gonna head back in and we're gonna look at some homestead building and I believe there are more petroglyphs. There's obviously gonna be more cool mountains and things like that to see. Uh, we'll kind of be on the other side of the ridge from where I camped at last night. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to be camping tonight. There are at least three more campgrounds or camping spots in this park that I know of. Uh, Maybe only two, actually. I think one is a group thing, but there's one established campground, and then way on the north side of the park, I think there's another uh, more primitive style of campground. After we see what we want to see today, uh, we'll kind of decide where we want to go. I believe I will be driving right past the established uh, like campground that I think has showers and electricity. Ooh, bumpy. So. I guess I'll be able to see that as we drive past and kind of make a decision then, but we may head to the north side of the park, I don't know. Uh, but I need to run into town, grab some supplies, I'll be driving right through a town as I exit and re-enter the park, and uh, yeah, we'll see where today takes us. This is, this is an amazing, amazing park, and I said it a million times in the last video, but I can't believe I've never heard of this place before. Stay tuned guys, this should be a good one. making our way back into the park. I did not stop at this sign yesterday on the drive in, so I figured I'd stop here today. You can see the big mountains off in the distance. All right, I'm gonna hop back in and shouldn't be too much farther. We're gonna go past the visitor center that we saw in yesterday's video or the last video, and we're gonna hit a petroglyph site again, but I'm gonna take a photo of this first.
we've made it to another petroglyph site. And there's a few of them here that I can see. Just walking right up here, you can see one. His head's kind of missing. See his dangle. <laughs> uh, there's a bunch over there. It's like you got to look around a lot or you'll miss some of them. Yeah, there's something right here. You can just barely see what would have been like an arm and a hand right here. And there was something there. It's mostly gone. But up here, there's quite a few of them. Oh, there's more up there. But you're not allowed to go up. But there's a bunch right here. Dude standing there. Oh, well, maybe it's an elk there. I don't know what that is, but above it looks like UFOs. And over there, I don't know if something's painted or if that's, I feel like something has been painted over there. I wish I could get up and see those. It's like another dude. Uh, oh, there's like a big old spaceman up on one side. On this side. Man, you can't see it from here. That's a bummer. I mean, people have definitely been walking up there. There's another spot, though. I'll respect it and not walk up there, but I'd like to. But, uh, yeah, let's keep going. And then... I think we'll hit that one more petroglyph site and then we'll, we should be going to the homestead site afterwards and then uh, I think after that we just need to find ourselves a campsite for the evening but I wouldn't mind waiting till a little bit later there's no reason to sit at camp when it's this hot out a bit of a hike to this one but it was just right down the road and it looks like there's a trail to it old dude did it just fine so we should be all right all right let's do this I can already see the lizard. I guess once you get up there, it's huge. I talked to the dude in the parking lot, and there's a bunch of them up there. He said this is the coolest one. Uh, probably also the longest hike, but it should be worth it. <coughs> Still a long ways to go. 
don't know if I'm supposed to go this way or this way. I don't think it matters. I can see some over there. I feel like the trail is supposed to go this way. I don't know. We'll see where this goes anyways. I think there's just multiple little trails that go off. Oh, nope. There we go. I found it. People were taking shortcuts. Whew, that heat. That heat will take it out of you. It's 95 degrees. Again. <sighs> All uphill. Yeah, that is huge. Wow. All right, we've made it up to the top. Whew. Oh, there's a little sign up here. See the truck way down there. That's ah, the same sign from yesterday. And here we go. Bunch of lizards. Bunch of lizards on here. But that's the big one. You can see that one from all the way down at the road. The rest of these you can't. Oh, there's another dude. You see him? Standing right there. And yeah, it's hard to see, but how do they even get up that high? I'm trying not to fall myself. See if I can walk out here a little ways. Here we go. It's huge. That's got to be maybe four foot, three to four feet long. There's a lizard and then another dude above him. I think there's more stuff off this way. Unless somebody else has carved junk up here. I don't know. I could have swore I, yeah, there's more steps and the trail keeps going. There's gotta be a lot more over here. Oh, there was something there. So it's like a sideways dude. You can see his feet and he's playing like a trumpet or something. Oh, there's a bunch right there. Yeah, that's cool. They're really light ones. Really light. You can see a swirl. really all I can make out. Another swirl, it looks like mountains. Another spaceship. Well, there was stuff over here. It's all super faded away. There was something right here. And then right there even. Something there. Oh, there's more over here. It's all over. But so much of it is so faded away. Right there. Look at that. Yeah, I don't know what that is. There's even like four little marks here. I think that's about all of it, man. It's so, such a huge cliff. Probably not supposed to touch any of that. I don't know, the trail keeps going. Do we keep going? We're in the shade. See the truck way over yonder. cool just look at that well, I'm gonna keep wandering down this way a little ways see if I spot anything else since it looks like there's still a couple of trails here and 
we'll see what happens but yeah this is really cool look at that the color in there the different layers yeah different different moments in history let's not go sliding down the mountain all right, I walked down a ways farther and I'm not seeing anything else. There's some little scribbles here, but that looks like it could almost be graffiti. And this trail gets really steep. And just this massive rock face behind me. And I don't wanna go sliding down the hill here. If it's possible, there we go. And just, a breathtaking view behind me. So many different colors of rock and dirt. But the road keeps going. We're going to keep following that down. I think it dead ends somewhere down there. I believe this is the road with the cabin, but there was another fork off out there. But like I'm just dripping sweat. It's just dripping off me. Uh, so, I'm going to drink some water. And I'm going to make my way back down to the truck. And ponder my existence. Yeah. Just wild out here. Such a, such a beautiful place. Such a beautiful place. All right. Let's get headed back down. Like I just wanna, I could stay here for a while, but. Yeah, it's time to head back down. All right, I gotta be careful, it's it's steeper. Ooh, like I said, it's a lot steeper than it looks. We've made it back down. Yeah, it's hot. It is really hot. It's a wild of time. Water and air conditioning. Let me get some of that sweet AC. We need my keys. There we go. There's the cabin. There's some signage over here we'll read. And I did bring my book with me because it tells me everything about this. But there are a bunch of trails that go off of here. I don't plan to walk any of the trails. Uh, I think a little bit farther down there's stuff like a chicken coop. Maybe we'll check that out. Um, is there a creek right here? I can hear water running. I'm distracted.
Yeah, there's water right here. I don't know where it's coming from. But this sign says, Giardia, don't drink the water. Uh, maybe if you if you uh, filtered it and whatnot. But here we are. We are at a 20th century homestead. And this is from, uh, the homestead is of Josie Bassett Morris, which I mentioned. Uh, and she made her home here until 1964 when she passed. So it shows a little bit more stuff. Uh, I am here, there's the cabin, and I guess there's a chicken coop and some old sites. Maybe we'll check those out since they're not too far away. Oh, and there was a root cellar over here. So it must have been across the road. Maybe we can see that, but let's, ooh, I'm gonna fall. Let's check out the cabin. Bummer that you can't, like, camp in more areas of this park because it is absolutely massive. I was just looking at the map. Uh, it's about 4.30. And I'll show you on the map when I get back, but I drove through the campground that I was talking about earlier in the video, and it isn't terrible, but it's busy. But if I go back out of the park, I think cross the border back into Colorado and go back into the park because it is massive. Uh, there is a campground that is on a gravel road and the map says for high clearance vehicles, etc. Hopefully I can make it down that. We shall see, but I might risk it and go, go out there. But uh, here we go. Uh, old homesteads are scattered throughout Dinosaur National Monument. Each is a memorial to hope and hard work. This cabin and nearby structures are part of the homestead established by Josie Bassett Morris in the early 1900s. Nearing 40 years of age, divorced, and with her children grown, Josie wanted a home of her own. She chose this spot for its plentiful water and good pasture, the natural resources necessary to grow fruits and vegetables and raise cattle. Braided rugs softened the cabin floors, handmade quilts warmed the bed, and Josie's favorite pictures hung on the wallpaper to walls. In summer, beds of cosmos, marigolds, and poppies ring the cabin. Family and friends for Vernal often visited. Vernal is the town that I was in uh, this morning. I went to Walmart, uploaded a video, picked up some supplies, etc. There was always a lot of work and never much money, but life at Cub Creek suited Josie's independent spirit. She lived in this cabin until shortly before her death in 1964 at age 90. And there's some more information in here. I'll read that to you too. also. Um, it looks as though we can go inside. I don't imagine there's much in there. I'm guessing the single pane windows, who knows, they might be original but probably not but yeah just an old log cabin you can see see all the logs here looks like a tar paper roof oh and there's two doors go in the first one here oh, it doesn't open any farther than that oh wow there's a fireplace While we're walking through here, I'll read you like the first few paragraphs of this uh, because it's pretty interesting. Josie provided for herself. She raised and butchered cattle, pigs, chickens, and geese. We have a small room here and there was a shelf here. There's another door that it's off of its hinges. Somebody has stolen the doorknobs, but old, old hardware there. Uh, and back to this, I might as well take my sunglasses off. I don't need them in here. My Walmart special, since I forgot my favorite black ones at home. Okay. Uh, she canned the harvest from her large vegetable garden. Josie's source of heat came from the wood burning in the fireplace, which is right here. And it's cool. Like, there's actually a fireplace, like a steel fireplace inside of there. And somebody else is pulling up. Uh, her water came from the spring, which is, I'm guessing, what I just saw, and there was no electricity. Her light came from an oil lamp. Josie lived a 19th century lifestyle well into the 20th century. Uh, she was accused, although not convicted, of cattle rustling twice and was an alleged associate of the outlaw Butch Cassidy. Married five times, she ultimately chose a single life. In 1964, while feeding her horse, it nudged her and she slipped and broke 
Uh, she slipped on some ice and suffered a broken hip. Alone, Josie dragged herself into her house where friends found her several days later. She had no phone to call for help. On her trip to the hospital, she said that she had a feeling she would never again see the home she built. A rancher to the end, Josie died in the, that spring, and she was 89. I think the sign out there said 90, but there's another door. And this, this room has really low windows in it. But, I mean, it's a nice cabin. Multiple different rooms. There's another door here. That one's newer, you can tell it's been replaced. But there was vents. So all the rooms surrounded the fireplace except for that one room in the front. Uh, not really sure what that was for. But it's wild to think. It's really cool. All right, let's head out and let's walk down the trail a little ways. Ooh, hit my head. All right, here what is, I believe, the remains of the chicken coop. It's surprising that this is still standing here. That's a log, log cabin chicken coop. It looks like there's one more structure over here. We'll check that one out quick. Oh, it's actually a ladder. What is going on over here? Maybe there was a horse corral or something right in here. There's a dirty little pond. I definitely wouldn't go swimming in that. And yeah, chicken coop, pond. Oh, farther down here, we'll have to go down here because it says their outhouse is down here. Their outhouse was quite a ways away from the house itself. I don't know if this is supposed to be closed off or what. What's going on here? Kind of an odd, odd thing. Oof, just dirty, nasty water. I'm not seeing an outhouse anywhere. Huh. Yeah, I don't see anything else out here. But it says, there's, if you can see on the map, we just passed the pond and I think up here was supposed to be the outhouse tack shed and animal shed. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, I don't see anything up here anywhere. But I guess at one point this is where she came to pee. So I'm gonna get headed back to the truck and make a decision as to where I'm gonna go to try to camp tonight. I know I can camp here, but I can't even look at maps right now to see how far it is to that other campground, but I can show you. I'm guessing it'll be at least an hour and a half drive from here, maybe two. So let's get out there and let's take a look. All right, let me unfold this map. We're back in the truck. what's going on here on the map it's in the dark let's get a little bit extra light okay so I am right here at the Josie Morris cabin uh, some of the petroglyphs I saw were there and there and uh, the visitor center is here that I viewed in the last video last video I camped up here at Rainbow Park I had to exit the park and you could have driven this trail but I drove out to a local town here and then came back in and drove this island park road down in and camped there. T 
tonight I'm thinking about camping at this spot called Echo Park. But that means I have to drive out of the park, drive all the way down here, and then drive back in. Uh, and then from here, it turns into an unpaved road. And this says high clearance vehicles are recommended right there, which should be fine. Uh, and I could drive all the way back in here and camp at this campground. Uh, I assume there's probably not going to be many people here. I drove through this one and there was multiple people in that campground. The biggest issue is I don't have cell signal right now in order to know how far I need to go. But as soon as I get back up towards the visitor center, I should get some cell signal and uh, should be able to see how long it's going to take me to get there. It is currently 4.40 p.m. So, I don't know. I'll drive back up there and see what that says. Sunset's probably around 8 p.m. So I should have enough time to get there no matter what. And honestly, it's hot out. So, in the spirit of adventure, and also in the spirit of not wanting to camp next to a bunch of other people at a established campground that I don't believe actually had showers at it, I think we are going to risk it for the biscuit and head out that way and see how far away this campground is. Uh, I'll let you guys know as soon as I get a cell signal how long this is going to take me. So who knows where we're going to end up tonight, but hopefully that spot works. Stay tuned, y'all. All right. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's the route I will have to take. And it's an hour and 53 minutes to go 66 miles but we're gonna do it so let's hit start head west on utah 149 toward quarry entrance road should put us there at 650 uh with the reality of the gravel or the high clearance road it might be after seven but i'm gonna risk it and i'm gonna head that way uh there should be a camp camp spot open considering what i saw at the campground today although it was busy there were sites open and last night I was the only person there I might get there and I might very well be the only person there but either way we're gonna give it a shot because there's got to be so much more cool stuff over there uh, and although I need to make a direct trip and not make any stops uh, maybe we'll see some cool stuff on our way out in the morning so yeah we got two more hours of driving ahead of us I'm gonna hit the road I'll see you guys when we get onto that high clearance road, I guess. Welcome to Colorado. Okay. All right, guys, not quite to the campsite yet, but like I said, we had to go back into Colorado. This park, this national monument spans both states. And uh, I'll need to see if I can look it up when I get there or at some point before I put this video out to see how many acres this park is because it's kind of mind-blowing. I mean, I'm just driving by it. That's all the park there. But uh, I still have an hour and a half to go. So bear with me on this one. Let's hope this campsite is good. All right, we've made it onto the dirt road. That sign said, no trailers, impassable with Ben. No trailers, no passenger cars and it is impassable when wet. Uh, it is a twisty, windy road. Oh, wow. So there's the road in front of me, right? There's the road way down there. And the campground's way over there somewhere. This says it's 11 miles away, and it's gonna take me 49 minutes to get there, so. An enjoyable road, I'm sure. Yeah, it's a little rough. Holy crap, it's rough. All right, y'all. I need to put this camera down and I need to pay attention to what I'm doing here and not drive off the road and off the side of this cliff. I'll see you guys a little bit later down the road.
Look at that view. I can't believe I'm here. Alright, I've made it to the campground, and surprisingly, there's a few people here. Uh, so I'm going to pick a spot, we'll see what I come up with. I don't know how many spots are here, but I'm going to try not to camp near anyone else. So, we'll figure this out. We're going to camp right here. Campsite, uh, decent site, and although there's, although there's a few people here, I'm way away from everybody else. Uh, there is a bunch of trees down on the other side. I got to get out and see what I'm doing here. And everybody is kind of huddled up under the trees over there, but I don't really need those because it's late, and I won't see the sun again because you can see the sun's behind this massive cliff. I need to uh, back her up to right about here. I got all these rocks, I've got a fireplace, and uh, this should be pretty rad. I gotta move the truck a little bit more. Y'all, here we are. This is an amazing, amazing campground. Fire pit, massive, massive cliff right there. Uh, the road came down in between these two, and I'll film more of that on the way out. There was a couple of homesteads. We'll take a look at those in the morning, but all around us, just these massive, massive cliffs. And the camera doesn't do it justice. God, that's gotta be like, 400, 500 feet tall, I don't know. It's huge, it's huge. But I need to pay for my campsite and then uh, we'll crack open a drink. All right, y'all, I picked this one up at a local gas station. Uh, it's just called Hefe, the original American Hefenwiesen. It's uh, from Widmer Brothers Brewing, and it looks like they're from Portland, Oregon. I don't think the bottle really says anything. Prost the original, and that is it. 4.9%, but we'll give this guy a whirl. God, I'm just like, and I can't even like show it appropriately on camera. This goes, you know, God, it's just massive. This is mind bending. This is one of, the road in here was amazing. I'll get more shots of the road. I'll probably mount the GoPro up in the morning for our drive out. And like I said, there was two, there was one full on homestead that was abandoned. And then there was one like log cabin sitting on a hill. We'll probably check those out. And then there was also another spot that supposedly has petroglyphs that we might check out in the morning also. So this might be a little bit of a long video, but it's been an absolutely amazing adventure up here. Uh, and I haven't even seen 
all the park yet. There's so much more to this that I won't be able to see, so I'm definitely going to have to come back. Just a good basic beer. Nothing crazy. Yeah, this place is amazing. I did pick up some firewood, so we're definitely going to have a fire tonight. Uh, I imagine the stars out here are going to be insane. Probably won't be able to show you very appropriately with the camera, but... It's crazy. And the weather's not bad now since there's no sun. I don't have to worry about the sun hitting me. I imagine during the height of the day, the heat of the day, it's probably pretty brutal down here. But the sun's already set for me. So see if I can give you a time check. I have zero cell signal. Uh, it's 7.05 p.m. right now. So the bummer thing is I had a video go out today. And I can't respond to any comments. I couldn't respond to any comments last night because I didn't have service there either. But it's all part of the adventure. Got to pick me up one of them Starlinks, right? I think, I think a Starlink and a Cell Booster are in my future. It's an amazing spot. Amazing spot. I'll go set the camera up a little farther away. Get you guys some better shots that maybe maybe can uh, put the scale to this because it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy out here. Cheers, y'all. I really hope the camera caught the echoes of those dogs barking. That was cool. This place is just massive. It's amazing here. Take ourselves a wander back here up to the face of this cliff and see what this is all about. Maybe point the camera straight up. Like I can't, I can't like you can't even begin to grasp the the size of this place camera does not do it justice at all does not do it justice at all we'll set her down there she's not exactly yeah I'm like underneath of it, basically. It could just come falling down on me right now. My eyes might be off, but to my eyeometer, it looks like you could fit a 10 to 15 story building right here, easily, easily. I'm just going to keep going on about how cool this park is, but uh, I'm going to hang out and drink my beer. And uh, in a little bit, we'll get ourselves a fire going, cook some dinner.
good morning. I just uh, realized I didn't have the camera turned on. <laughs> so I've been sitting here talking to myself for five minutes. Uh, I'm going to get some coffee going. So last night I sat there and I watched the fire. And uh, then I started staring at the stars. And by the end of that, I was done. I was not going to make anything to eat. I crawled in here. I ate a Nutrigrain bar and fell asleep. There's some dogs barking. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can't believe I didn't push the record button. It's 8.18 in the morning. Uh, and I've got at least a couple hour drive out of here. So I need to hit the road, but I'm going to get some coffee going. And we've still got a couple of spots to see. Uh, yeah, I was just saying, I think this is probably the first video where I didn't cook dinner while I was camping. Uh, but I've been on the road for seven days today. So I'm getting a little lazy with it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a beautiful night, though. I just got tired and didn't want to do anything. and So I didn't. I just went to sleep. But yeah, like I said, there's a couple of things we'll go check out this morning on our way out of here. And then I got to figure out where I'm going from here. Because uh, I don't know where I'm going to stay tonight. But I need to put some miles on since I've been sitting at this park for two days now. And I need to go get my coffee cup out of the cab of the truck. Yeah. Sorry we skipped dinner. I'm sure some of you guys are probably pretty disappointed in that. <laughs> but we've got plenty more coming up from this trip anyway. So it is what it is. I gotta remove my coffee cup. Nose is all stuffed up. I don't know what's the deal. What the deal is out here? Oh, I got some breakfast. Hey, we got mini donuts. You don't get dinner, but you'll get a breakfast that I took a long time to prepare. That's that is ready. I think all I have in here is Folgers left. Lately, I've just been doing it that way. I don't even take the bag out. I just drink it with the bag in there. Get it extra strong. This is a little bit longer. Mm. All right, give that a second to dry out. We've got some mini powdered donuts from Little Debbie. It's better than nothing this morning. Not too shabby. Oh. 
All right. All right, I gotta grab my box of wood and my bug zapper light. And uh, get this stuff cleaned up and I'll see you guys on the road. This long, windy, rough road out of here. But easily one of the most beautiful roads I've driven. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to get to it. This is probably the highlight of it for me, this road and the scenery on this road. I mean, the petroglyphs and all that have been amazing too. And there are some on this road somewhere. So we'll stop at those and check those out. But yeah, it's just absolutely gorgeous down here. But it's rough. Um, I really should have my tires aired down a bit, but I do not. That would help out a lot. Holy bucket, that's bumpy. I've got some water on the road. check out this little cave right oh wow it goes way back in so it's kind of a short entrance I'm six foot tall but if you crawl in here holy crap this is wild look at that it's like like this piece is just suspended above my head and it goes off into here I don't have a light I think it just comes down to a point here. Yeah. There's people have carved stuff all over into the walls in here. <clears throat> and I think this side is basically the same. Yeah, it just kind of comes to an end right down in there but it's awesome how it opens up in here and yeah this this piece in the middle I mean if I come over here like the camera doesn't translate but it goes way up way way up ha ah, this is cool yeah you could definitely spend the night in this thing I imagine some ancient folks probably did but yeah that's cool that is really cool. And then I'm just in this massive valley here. You can see. Right, look at that rock face on the other side. Pretty wild. All right. Keep heading on down the road. If I keep stopping like this, it's gonna be four hours before I get out of here. Bye bye, cave. This is sign 
doesn't say anything on it. It says the name of this, that was Whispering Cave. It didn't really whisper much to me, but it was cool. I got things rattling around back here. So this one wasn't too far out either. I'll actually shut the rig off for this one. Take my phone and my keys with me. I gotta walk down the road a little ways. Oh. Just the massive size of this place is still, still can't really wrap my head around it. And I got some petroglyphs. It sounds like there's a creek down here too. Yeah, there's a little clear creek right right down in there. <clears throat> okay, where is this at? Oh, way up top. So this is what you're gonna see up there. And I'll read this to you quick. So this says, carved into the cliff face high above are several human-like figures, each with what appear to be elaborate headdresses or necklaces. Approximately a thousand years ago, the Fremont people created these petroglyphs. How did they do it? Today, these are inaccessible, but this wasn't always the case. When the Fremont made these Im images, the ground surface extended to the levels of the petroglyphs approximately 35 feet up the cliff. Over the last thousand years, the water flowing in the creek channel on the west side of this canyon has eroded that access, leaving the petroglyphs high above human reach. I mean, that's that's their story and they're sticking to it. I'm gonna have to get my phone out for this because this camera's not gonna do it justice. I won't be able to zoom in far enough. They're up there. All right, let me switch to my phone quick. All right, we should be able to get a better shot of it with this. It's way up there. There we go, you see it? What is up with that? And there's a couple more over here, it looks like. Down there. Oh, well, they're all over over here. Can't tell if they keep going. It's hard to see. It's really hard to see. Oh, they're all the way over there. Oh, let me see if I can figure out where it is on the camera here. Uh, right there. But the big one, yeah, the big one's right there, it looks like. Mm. 
and you can see how like how high up above they are and they say that the ground level was up there it was up there far enough for them to reach it that's kind of wild yeah there's a bunch a lot of them are really faded that's pretty crazy but yeah there's a tiny little creek clear water down here slows on down i didn't see or hear that anywhere near the campsite but yeah yeah those are wild how tall they are how high up they are that's crazy all right back to the truck and then uh, I think we've got one more site left that we'll check out there's an abandoned homestead and there was like a covered wagon covered with had like tin on its roof it was really weird so we'll go check that out but yeah cool spot
All right, so we came out of the canyon a little ways. We'll go back into it over here, but here is the first little uh, homestead building. There's an old piece of machinery here. Couldn't tell you what that is personally. Uh, I don't see that. I don't know if you guys can see that. It almost looks like International Harvester, but it's probably not. What does this say? Deering. And then you just got this tiny little one room building here. There's clay on the roof. There's a big animal living down there. We'll leave him alone. Yeah, look at that roof material. And the inside's pretty, pretty shot, but. Back in the day, somebody probably lived in there. And I mean, your view outside in the morning wouldn't suck. Yeah, it's kind of neat to see that. The other place that we'll check out has multiple buildings. Yeah, it's just a clay roof. Like they just dumped dirt on the roof. They probably got out of the hills from right here. I imagine they, there's stuff back in the hills and they have hidden. Yeah. Oh, you can kind of see they had stuffed the same roof, the same clay or dirt or whatever in between the cracks also. But you gotta think, like this thing was chopped up and built by hand. Yeah, you can see all the, the mud and stuff on this side. It's crazy. It's really neat. It's neat that that piece of machinery is still sitting here. If anybody knows what this is, let me know. All right, hop back in the truck, keep on heading down the road.
just down the road, we've come across this stuff. And this is what I thought was really cool. We'll look at that in a second. But we do have a sign right here. I didn't think this was actually part of the park, uh, but this was a homestead. So I'll read this to you guys. Uh, this says, a good home. So Jack Chu was searching for a good home for both his family and his cattle. He found it here at Pool Creek, one of the first ranches established in what is now Dinosaur National Monument and home to three generations of Chews. When the Chews arrived, there were just the raw materials of a promising future. Pool Creek provided water. Nearby areas offered good winter grazing and trees, and the surrounding mountains supplied the timber. For the Chews and the others who homesteaded this rugged, arid landscape, self-reliance was as necessary as water. The Chews established orchards, planted gardens, and dug irrigation ditches. With hard work and nature's resources, the Chews made a home that sustained them for more than half a century. And there's a photo here. You guys can see that and that is Mary Chu and her sons Ryle or Rail and Ralph stand in front of the cabin built in 1911 the cabin burned in 1942 I don't know if this is the one they're talking about maybe at one point there was an older cabin across the road but yeah it's cool that this is all still here oh and there's more more farming equipment in here old stuff all hand sawed lumber you can see how it was originally it's like a thick log building and then they put these uh, smaller pieces over all of the cracks and you've got another building here This one looks like it might have been more like a cabin, actually. What is that? Is that an old heater? Yeah, it's an oil heater. Oil control valve. Automatic Products Company. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I don't know if it says a date or anything on here. No. Nope. This says... It says oil burning stove. Can't see any date though. That's about it that's in here. But the coolest thing has got to be this covered wagon here. we'll even be able to get in yeah you can get in it look at that there's obviously been stuff living in here and all these drawers would close and over here I imagine there may have been a wood stove or something because there's a chimney but also you can see that it's got multiple layers so like there's this but underneath of it look at that color suppose it would be really lame if I didn't try to get up in here yeah it's been full of creatures but I can stand up uh, but yeah it's cool to see how all these drawers would slide in under the those would go under the bed I imagine that was the bed area you had a couple there there's a drawer here an old tin can. Can't tell at all what that says on there. Little shelf. Yeah, I'm curious if there was like a wood stove. Oh, probably sat on this metal frame and then ran out the roof right there. I wonder how old this thing actually is. Oh, well, you've got your hand control for your brake. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Somebody else is driving by. Yeah, look at that. Really cool sight to see. All right. 
I'll take a look at this spot over here quickly before my camera battery dies. You can see the old outhouse over there. I don't believe this is actually part of the the chew stuff, but yeah, it's been locked numerous times, so they've got a floor a floor lock. But there ain't nothing here. So I'm going in. Got another old stove. Yeah, this is way more modern. I might be trespassing right now. Uh, old PBR Natty lights, those aren't that old. A Norge. Norge fridge. Somebody stole the the wood stove from here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to be in here. It's just an old house. Kind of surprised all the door knobs haven't been stolen. Yeah, ain't nobody gonna be living here anytime soon. Hmm. It's an old aerosol can. Single pane windows. Probably a cellar somewhere out here. There's another building there. Yeah, this might have been the cellar here. Looks like it. Yep. It's all caved in. And then you had the outhouse here, which is all tore up. Ooh, it's a double suitor. get headed back to the truck and uh, we'll get headed down the road.
All right, y'all, I have made it up, and uh, my transmission is a little warm. It did not like that last switchback hill up uh, in first gear, but that's what it took to get up the hill. I've been sipping on my coffee a little bit as much as I could, take my hands off the wheel. I know it does not translate to camera at all how rough that road was, or you know, going down into some of those cuts where the, the water runs through when it rains. You know, it's, it's, I don't know, dang near 45 and then 45 up out of it. But I know the GoPro, like it just doesn't translate on the camera, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know, uh, there was a big fail on cooking for this video, but I've still got, I don't know. What is today? Friday. I've still got five or six more days to go. Uh, a couple of those nights will be in a hotel though, but that'll be a great experience also. But uh, I'm gonna get headed on down the road. I need to find some cell signal and I need to figure out where I'm going and what I'm doing today and probably try to find myself a campground or somewhere tonight that has a shower because I could definitely use a shower. I don't know, maybe it'll be a KOA, maybe it'll be a truck stop. I'll just have to figure out how far I'm going and all of that nonsense but yeah guys uh it was really cool down there and just that homestead and this road in and out like can you imagine living down there and having to drive this road in and out to do anything and i'm still i'm still a good like hour away from any any kind of town and who knows if there was a town here like that back then uh or if that town was here who knows really wild trip really cool park Dinosaur National Monument, all the petroglyphs, etc., were wild. It's just crazy to think about that kind of stuff and where we come from and uh, our ancestors and all those people and, and the people that were here before us. I don't know. It's cool to think about. It's kind of mind bending to think about. And then the areas that they were in is also mind bending to think about. But I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. Oop, looks like the guy that. I spotted at the cabin, made his way out. He's from Oregon. Got that Tundra with the soft topper on the back. Anyways, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and close this one out here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, plenty more to come from this trip. So stay tuned for the next adventure. I'll see you in a bit.